You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Hello, Seekers after Jesus. This is Romo Simeon, author of the Gospels of John. <laughs> Not the author of, but the Lecture Divina and the Gospels of John, the Bible. Love letters from your father teachings of Jesus Christ and today I'm going to speak to you simply as an ordinary man when we talk about Jesus he came as an ordinary man he says he he's the son of man and yet he's the son of God does it reveal all this at one time but he says I'm a human being and I came here for what we could say it in a theological way and to say well he came to convert the world to die for sin for give return the children of God back to the father but when you come down to the basic point of what Jesus did you see that he came first of all to connect to the human race to connect God the Father to the human race and so this is what he taught the apostles in John 15 from verses 16 on he said he's going to make them his followers he's going to send them out He's going to make them apostles. And this connects very much to what I'm about to say. Is that to be witnesses of Jesus. What does he say? I'll start out just to say it simply. If I'm an ordinary guy. And I can go out and evangelize. And reach out to people. As I try to do every single day that I can. Sometimes I can't do it now at my age of 93, but I still try to do it. I do it in a simple way and following Jesus. What are, what did Jesus say? He says to the apostles, I'm sending you out. Go, go. You have to go out. You have to reach people. You can't reach people if you don't go out hard to reach them. I feel sorry for the hermits that are up on a mountain somewhere and they want to reach out. But they reach out through prayer or something. They say, the Holy Spirit helped me to reach people through prayer. And we often say that. We want to reach people through prayer. Lord, help that person. That person, I can't reach out to them, but help them. Send your grace to them. Yes, it works. Lord has many ways of reaching out to people, to reach their consciences, to inspire them. But he's saying now something specific to the apostles themselves, something very physical. And that's what I'm talking about now. He says, go. Go and teach them to observe what I have taught you. Pass it on. So, first, before you can teach anybody, you have to connect to them. So it's a connection process. And you have to reach them and model me. What I have taught you. What Observe, you've been with me for three years and you've observed how I do it and you do it the same way. And I'm telling each one of you out there, you can be an ordinary person. This may floor you. Say, I can't do it. Or I'm afraid to do it. Even people that we know of who are working in churches and who are told us, go out and reach out, pass on to Jesus what he does for you. Like, like Shadavina. They I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. 
and they can't, and they don't do it. They don't do it. They don't go out. So we are going to talk about the witnessing process. And you're going to find out it's simple. In a way, it sounds complicated, but let's go to the simple part. Witnessing. It's so simple. You can do it every day in any way to anybody. Anyone at all. Any age group for children to the oldest people to anyone at all. There's some that seem a little more difficult than others like people who think they know it all. That you can't talk to them. But the very fact is you're human, they're human. Connect. So, this may sound like a big long process and I'm going to speak a little at length, but how simple could a thing be? There's no need to prepare the situation. You don't have to go to some hall to be acclaimed or to be introduced. No introductions needed. There's no need to determine who you're going to meet. It's not like you're getting an audience of persons that you're you're famous with and or you're some kind of celebrity and you're going to wow them. You're not going to wow anybody. You don't have to wow anybody. We're only talking about connecting. There's no need to prepare any circumstance whatsoever. Whatsoever. The circumstance is any human circumstance in which you can meet with people. Or meet people, not meet with them, just meet them. On strangers. People you know. People that connect to you in social circumstances. But you don't have to make be a social social wizard. And you don't have to worry about any rejection. All you're doing is trying. All you're doing is being a human being. It's it's a neutral action. It's determined and yet it's neutral. It's just being human. So I want to give a few we call it, and in fact, we call it witnessing. We say, some would say, well, you're an ordinary guy and you do extraordinary things. No, I don't do extraordinary things. All I do is proclaim Jesus and find a way that I can express my love of him. And that's easy because if you really love someone, it's the easiest thing in the world to proclaim them to somebody else. You know, if you fall in love with somebody, you say to them, I met the most beautiful girl in the world. All these songs. Well, you do an extraordinary thing. You're giving that person an extraordinary position and celebrity that belongs to just about anybody. So, what you do need to do is to reach out. That's the whole issue. Just connect. Socialize. Social. Be social. And you can connect to any person at all that you meet. You're trying to make a positive connection. That's your goal. Positive connection, just be who you are. You're a Christian, you're an active Christian, you take a positive position, and Jesus, what did Jesus do? All the people that he would meet in this world are all children of God. All people that were created by the Father and 
he created as the Son of God. And as a human being, he's connecting to saints and sinners, anybody at all. Because his goal is to bring any child of God back to the Father. No matter how prodigal, no matter how confused, and he reached out to everybody. So your goal is to make a positive connection. You don't have an agenda and say, I'm going to reach this person in order to convert him and to baptize him and to turn him into a Christian. This is the first circumstance, the first effort. Just connect. Just connect. That's all it requires. Persons have attitudes. Don't disregard them. You have attitudes? Disregard it. They're human and you're human. You've got a connection there right off. What are their needs? What are their desires? The same as yours. The same as ours. Needs. We need to belong. We need to be given some attention. We need to have respect and consideration. These are our needs. We're here in the world. We look around us and say, Oh, I don't fit in. You've got an attitude. Why don't you fit in with humans being a human? Because they don't act humanly. Ah, uh -uh. then you act humanly. You can reach them. Everybody has that inner desire, this inner unmet need in many circumstances. And that's what their problem is. That's what your problem is that you have an unmet need to be able to connect and you want to just reach out just be a human being to be accepted as a human being and to be able to do something positive in this world yes there are negatives we're going to ignore them ignore the negatives negatives will arise when the negatives arise and this person is connected to you and you find out there's a negative, there's your chance to help to set them straight by giving them Jesus. Not by giving them yourself. By giving them Jesus. So it's your connection. Ultimately, it's your connection with Jesus. Your connection to the human race. Your connection to yourself as a simple human as an ordinary person and extraordinary things happen it's not extraordinary that you find a friend for life it's not extraordinary my personal friend for life if you want to say who's your best friend in your life first of all my best friend has to be myself. If I don't make peace with myself, I can't make peace with anyone else. Phys physically, best friend in my life was my little older brother from childhood all the way through life. Even now that he's deceased, I see him as my best friend. You made friends and socialized with your mother. You can socialize and make a best friend of a husband or a wife. And commit yourself to them for, for all life, for eternity. But mainly, we have to make a best friend of Jesus. Get to know him and to get to know him in scriptural terms means to get to love him. Because if you see him as he is and allow him and admit to see, let him see you as you are in every way. 
He doesn't knock you off. He's looking for the prodigals. He's looking for the saints. He's looking for anyone who will work with him. So I'm going to give you a simple example. I was going to start out with a simple example, but I got carried away. I'll give you a simple example. At my age, it's hard for me to walk. So I go on, I have to get exercise. So I go out on my tricycle because I fell off a bicycle, did other things in my life, even tried to ride a motorcycle and learn to ride a motorcycle. Did many things. But right now, my circumstance is that I can hardly walk. I need a cane to walk. I need a walker. But I have to get exercise. So I go out, and there's a park nearby to where I live, and it's a nice place. It's along the lakeside, and there's a bike path, and it's two miles long. So if I do the whole trip in a day, it's two miles to the point, to the last position, and two miles back. If I can't do it, I can't do it. But I'm out there. And there are people in this park. People walking around. People sitting on benches. There's a little beach. A child's playground. And a little beach. And they're in the water. If they're not in the water, they're on the ice in the wintertime. But whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The circumstance does not really matter. I go out, I don't know who I'm going to meet. Or who's, they don't know who's going to meet me. I have no goal except to make a, con a connection with anybody. And it's very simple. You say, hello, how are you? That's a simple way. When you ask about the weather, that's a simple way to say really nothing. But you see the circumstance of the person who's out there, whatever circumstance they're in, whatever situation. And right now it's very easy, especially with this signs up around that say, we admire health care people because they are essential. Essential workers. Well, who are essential in a human way? Just think about it. To Jesus. Who does Jesus think is essential in this world? Essential. Uh, you're going to say, well, his mother. No. She's special and essential. And we're not always that special situation. We're not this saint that the Lord from the time of our birth worked miracles through us or with us or on us. He gave us a miracle of existence. Every human being has the miracle of existence. Not only the miracle of existence but the mir miracle of immortality and perpetual existence. That's too much to handle right now. But the miracle he gave us, the basic one, he created us as a human being. We are part of the human race. And he died for that human race. He wants to bring us back to the Father he wants us to live a positive life. And he wants us to have an eternity with himself. So, what word can we use when we see people? Anybody. Anywhere. 
acceptance. Accept them already. You're already connecting to them. When your attitude is, they are human beings. I am a human being. They like to have some kind of social life connecting. That's all it means. It's not that going to parties or anything. It doesn't mean that. Social means brotherly, family. We're all part of the human family. So I go out on my bicycle and just so happened, the example I'm going to give, I see a young mother pushing a pram, a little buggy, baby in it. This actually happened yesterday. And two little children hanging on. And I'm just going to go by. But I'm going to make a connection. I say hello. Everybody says hello, hi. Well, I could say a little more. I say, hi. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you because you are an essential worker. You're an essential person. They sometimes get a little hold back. What? Or they just walk away. Doesn't matter. You just, you made, you went out and you reached out. And you don't go to the part of teaching yet. One step at a time. The person says, I'm not so special. Whoa, I said, I said, these children here, you take care of them, you take them out for a walk, they love you, they respond to you, you give them names. You sound special to me. Oh, oh, I, 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 I says, not only you're special, I'll say to you something extraordinary. You are the most special, special person I'm going to meet today. You're the most special person. Most? No, other people are more important. I didn't say important. I didn't say they have better jobs. I didn't say they, they do things that we need, like, you know, guy fixing our sewers or someone delivering the mail. Someone in a grocery store. Some farmer who grows crops. Yes, everybody is special. Everybody is important. But if, if it wasn't for mothers, I wouldn't be here. If God only created man and didn't create Eve and say go and multiply, I wouldn't be here. See how special you are. And I'm happy, considerate, talking, smiling, laughing at myself, this person's not laughing at anyone else. Yeah, you're special. This sentence, you're more special than I am. In that sense, I never became a mother. I never had children so attached to me that they depend on me for everything. For the very first embrace. See how special Oh yeah. And I wiggle my fingers a little bit and look at the children and says, well, what are the names? No, this one's Emma. Uh, this one is Jeannie. And this is a little boy and he's James. Oh, wonderful. See, as soon as we say their names, they're happy. They're looking up at you. There's love in their eyes. When I was a little boy, I remember I was about less than two years old. A man came to the door, and I was hanging onto my mother's skirt. And 
He's all a nice little boy, guy. He's so good I could take him home with me. I understood what he said. The mother says, well, I think I'll keep him. <laughs> and I was so happy. I go grab her, her skirt and hug her, hug her leg, that she kept me. Took it a little seriously. But there's love with mother. So that's it. And start talking to her. He says, no one ever said that to me before. I says, I'm sure your husband did. Well, yeah, when we got married. And here she's got three children. He's not, maybe, you're not telling her that she's so essential. She has to hear that every day. She hears it from her children that she's essential. She's not telling it to herself. So why can't somebody tell her? Isn't that what Jesus would say to her? And right away, he says, yeah, I haven't heard that in a long time. Now, she's trapped into your witness. You're special, I'm special, I'll say that to her. And I did say that to her because God created you, he created me, you're my sister. And you don't have to act like my sister, but in my view, you're my sister. I said the same thing to women that were in prison for committing murder. Murdering their husbands. Persons who are prostitutes. And I always said, sister, you're my sister. Doesn't mean I agree with what you do, but I'm here to give you help. If you need it, I'm your brother. Whatever I can do for you, I'll do it. I'm not going to do things that just enable you. No, I'm not going to write a letter to your parole officer or to a judge to get you out of prison. But I will talk to you as brother and sister and say to you, God made you special. He made you to love him and to love yourself. And I'm not going to do anything to harm you. I'm not going to do anything that to enable you because that doesn't help you. Just like people may use or abuse you. I'm not here to be used but to be a brother. And the one who is your brother that really counts in this situation is Jesus. How easy this is. So here I go to the third point. Go, reach out, and teach. Teach someone who loves me. Loves me in spite of any past sinning who loves me because I am also a prodigal. And he's telling me, if you love me, do what I command. Love one another as I have loved them. I died for these people. For the worst sins. They crucified me. I reached out to Mary Magdalene when they were going to stone her to death. Stoning doesn't mean little stones. It means to crush her to death under a pile of stones. They act in a way as a brother and sister. So he says, model me. That's what it means to witness. 
So it doesn't matter what circumstance we're in. Go out, we call it fancy words. Each ministry to the hippies, to the drug addicts on the beach. My attitude, they're my brothers and sisters. I'm there to help them. If they ignore me, knock me off, I can't make a connection. So what? I tried. I acted towards them as they were brothers and sisters. My attitude was that way. If I'm in an oriental country, country, and I saw Buddhist monks walking around holding their begging bowls. And then they go into a village, they sit down there in the village, saying their prayers, just sitting there, praying in a circle. And the people that connect to them, they're connecting. They're in the village. They're not in the monastery. People sit there and listen. And they make connection. I went and sat there. I didn't know whether it was a Buddhist or not. I just went and sat there. Just observe what they're doing. They're saying their prayers and then people are talking to them. They're asking them questions. They're teaching. They go, reach out, teach. And they witness Buddha. When I needed some help and connection, I went over to the Buddhist monastery. Sat with them. Said, what is it? I'm your brother. I'm your brother. I'm trying to get across the Mekong River and I'm not allowed to go there to Laos. And uh, I see that Buddhist monks are going there easily by boat from one country to the other. They're not having visas or anything of like that. I'm not asking any questions. I just observed and made friends with them. And they said, yeah, we honor people. We honor the human race. I honor you. I'm not here to preach them. I'm not here to persuade them against being Buddhists. We're just humans talking to each other. And that was the beginning of a relationship. And they invited me. Yeah, you want to go to Laos? Just put on the robe, come with, come with us. Does it mean you're a Christian? We're not telling you not to be a Christian. Let's come with us. And I went to Laos and I witnessed there. You just see your opportunity. You reach out and you're not afraid. So you have to allow people free response. Free response. If they don't respond and don't wish to respond, that's it. There's no pressure. It's amazing when you have this attitude and act this way towards people, they do respond. I say, God bless you to anybody I meet. They say, you too? Some don't say anything. Some say, God bless you. Then here one day, <laughs> after years, teenager on a bicycle says Jesus loves you Jesus bless you I was wondering at first what it was I said this is almost miraculous <laughs> it turned out that 
a magazine I had in the back basket of the bicycle was one of Jesus crucified where I was wearing a witness shirt sometimes Jesus like I'm wearing now so remember people are human it's not difficult at all I thought it was when I was kind of academic edit attitude towards people and they all I'm gonna witness to them and go and try to talk about Jesus and talk about creation talk against evolution and I'm going to convert them I have done all those things but not that directly yes in prison talk to convicts who will relate their realities to me find out information they don't even give to their parents to their mothers to their lawyer but says this man is talking to God and I'm just listening I'm his brother and I'll see what I can do to give him self-respect again to let him know that I'm his brother and whatever he tells me is between brothers yes there was a district attorney who realized that prisoners were opening up to me and try to trap me and say well you have to tell us what he told you or will indict you I'm not brave it scared me but I said simple he was talking to a brother he was talking to God and I didn't hear anything that I didn't see as coming from a brother and that's it no big hero that's an ordinary guy and when you're an ordinary guy and you're in love with Jesus you can do extraordinary things because he does it for you he makes the connection and you connect people to Jesus he is attractive he is attractive you know him he attracts you he attracts them you track to the center on the cross. You call him the good thief. That's a kind of a contradiction. But Jesus saw him as one that he came to return to the Father. By the way, I had difficulty with learning this myself. And I think in another program, I did say that I owed it to a person, a very simple person that I was teaching. We called him the personality kid. He could go and talk to anybody, children, adults, anyone. All of a sudden, he was involved. We called him the personality kid and we left. And I looked at that and I says, I wish I could do that and watch them. He did exactly what I had to learn academically or through the scriptures or through meditating on Jesus. Listen to his word. He would reach out without fear, focus on what they were doing, even the child playing. Just affirm him what he's doing that's good. Don't affirm what's bad. Reach out. And before you know it, these children were listening to him. You know what listening means? They're not just hearing him. 
They're listening with attention, with concern, with love and respect. And what he tells them, they remember. And he was one who imaged Jesus. And there'd be no fear, no danger in it. Danger in it, make a connection, is to proclaim yourself or say, I am going to do things for you. I, whatever I say to you is for your own good. Those are negative. Just respond. Just respond to Jesus. And they respond to you. And this woman with the three children, she says, gee, can I know more? I always have my Bible and my book on Lecture Divina with me, a copy of it. I say, open up anywhere. And I'm going to do that right now. Open it anywhere. Don't search. Do like St. Francis of Assisi. Put your finger on it and see what he says. The Lord who gives gives all deserves all. To soak up John 6 verse 29. It's not miraculous. It's just brother talking to brother. It's Jesus talking to us and asking us to respond. Yes, and I say, yes, Jesus. You gave all to me. And you deserve all I can give to you. Which is infinitely less. But it's enough for me to reach out and do something extraordinary. And witnessing for Jesus should be ordinary. The extraordinary becomes ordinary. You can do it any time, anywhere, with anyone, in any circumstance. And let's pray for this. For you and for me. That I do it consistently, honestly, and that what I tell you is what I am trying always to do. Pray for me. I only am an ordinary guy who loves Jesus. Hello, God's Beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.